Dear BMW M Division, Happy 50th birthday. All the best. Henry. P.S. Would have got you a gift, but I gather you've made yourself one. You see, for only the third time in its history, BMW has applied the letters C, S and L, or S, L and C, this was a lot less windy when I planned it, to one of its cars, Coupe Sport Lightweight. And although we've had some really good CS cars recently, that extra letter, well, it brings with it a greater weight of expectation, ironically. And that extra 12th letter of the alphabet really has brought with it not just celebration, but a bit of consternation. When this was announced, a lot of people were up in arms at the idea of a CSL that weighs 1,625 kilos, that's a DIN curb weight, or 3,580 pounds, being called a CSL. That's just not a very light weight, is it? And I get that. It seems intrinsically somehow wrong. But here are a couple of thoughts. For a start, Ferrari 550 Maranello. That's a car that weighs 1700 kilos there or thereabouts so slightly heavier than this and i've never heard anyone complain about the way that that drives so perhaps we shouldn't be too quick to judge an r8 v10 a 911 turbo s a vantage a new c8 stingray and 812 super fast all weighs much or more than the new csl so in the modern world this car isn't a total outlier and then there's the fact that just because a car is inherently heavy, it doesn't mean that it's not worth taking the weight out. Perhaps we should judge this car not on its overall weight, but rather on the package, the CSL part of this car. After all, you can't blame the M Division for having slightly bulky materials to work with in the first place, and a 440i coupe weighs 1770 kilos. However, costing a hefty 60% or nearly £50,000 more than a standard M4 competition, this CSL needs to be special. So what has BMW's M Division done to make this lightweight? Well, they've taken out overall 100 kilos or 220 pounds. 24 kilos has been taken out by something that's not actually in this car. You see, the most lightweight seats are fixed back and they're manually adjustable, whereas these have got the movable backs and are electronically adjustable. I do love these seats though, they still feel really special. And I can only imagine that the proper buckets would feel even better. And yes, they do still get the curious carbon crotch catchers. Talking of seats, 21 kilos has been saved by removing the rear ones. Back there now we've just got, well, a couple of sort of indentations for storing crash helmets. Another 15 kilos has been saved by removing an awful lot of sound deadening and having this four kilos lighter carbon centre console down here. The carbon boot and bonnet, they save another 11 kilos. There's a lovely titanium silencer which just looks fantastic with all its rainbow colours on. That saved another four kilos. And then there are a plethora of smaller savings, like the almost worryingly gaping new kidney grille, the emission of floor mats, the simplified aircon, again not on this car, and the rear lights save 400 grams and I think look really cool. They're wire lasers and there's just something quite, I don't know, fitting about lightweight lights. Perhaps the most important savings from a dynamic point of view are the 21 kilos shaved off with the new wheels, the carbon ceramic brakes and lighter suspension parts. All of that adds up to 100 kilos or 220 pounds saved overall. Is it worth it? Well, we'll get to the dynamics in a bit, but I think it's worth it from the sense that you get into this and unlike a CS model, 
which I think you really have to drive to understand the changes that have been made. This feels special, well, from the moment you get in, certainly from the moment you start up and you hear that lack of sound deadening, the slightly echoey sound behind you. It just feels special. The fact you can hear the exhaust more, hear things clashing around in the arches more, that gives it an L feel. There are plenty of other things that add to the special, stiffer, more honed feel of this car too. The extensive bracing under the bonnet, the rose joints at the rear, the helper springs, the 8mm lower ride height, the increased camber, the solidly mounted gearbox and the firmer engine mounts. It all adds to the experience. But to really get under the skin of the full CSL ethos, what this car is really striving for, I think we need a little help from another car. This is the E46 M3 CSL and it is absolutely brilliant. There was of course an earlier CSL, the 3 litre, but that was a pure homologation special and in its famous Batmobile form had a much greater focus on aerodynamics. I think it's this E46 that is really the inspiration for the latest G82. Oh, just the fluidity of it. Uh, through here, let's try it. <laughs> this just sits so nicely into a slide. Takes a bit of a bit of aggression to get it going, but once it's there, it's so good. I'm intrigued to see what the new one's like. Can it match this for just pure front engine rear drive balance when you get it out on track? It still feels pretty quick as well, actually. It's only got some run. <laughs> 355 brake horsepower, 273 pounds foot, to be precise. This engine well, it had sharper profile cams, and then obviously that amazing carbon airbox to help it breathe that much better and then the thinner walled exhaust as well. Listen to that. <laughs> One thing that's definitely improved in the new car is brakes, because famously this car had brakes akin to a chocolate teapot. Thankfully a new one has carbon ceramics. This car saved 110 kilos over the standard E46 M3, taking to 13.85 kilos. Strangely, this does actually obviously have rear seats, unlike the new one. A big chunk of this car's weight saving came from the carbon roof, which was really trumpeted at the time. It saved seven kilos. Obviously, the new car you can't do that because the standard M4 has a carbon roof already. The E46 also gets lovely carbon door cards, which are sadly absent in the G82. But the Alcantara wheel and the carbon central tunnel are both aped in the new car. Other similarities in a way which you could draw, I suppose, are the fact that this, perhaps controversially, and you can feel there with the torque interruption on the upshift, had the SMG2 gearbox, which was a Getrag six-speed that was then automated. Obviously these paddles here and it was a controversial gearbox and I suppose the latest one has a controversial gearbox as well because it has the 8-speed automatic gearbox. Would both have been better as a manual? Arguably yes, but there we are. <laughs> I'm going to put the gearbox all the way up to maximum attack just so you can hear it. You hear the thump all the way back there. Like the new car, this also had suspension changes with shorter springs, retuned dampers, larger diameter anti-roll bars and aluminium rear suspension links with stiffer bushings. The steering was also quickened from 15.4 to 1 to 14.5 to 1. I love this last corner through here. It's 
smash it up, just tease it all the way through, run it out to the exit. Woohoo! <laughs> I love this car. Now, I think it's time for CSL's old and new to pause in the paddock, because there are a couple more similarities that I want to draw attention to. Starting with aesthetics, because this new M4 CSL has clearly chosen to, well, mimic, remember the old M3 with ducktail, the integrated ducktail in its boot. Shocked actually by just how much larger this one is compared to this one. We've got the two strakes here, obviously coming down from the carbon roof. And then we have the tyres, because tyres were a big thing with the original M3 CSL, because it came on the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup rubber, which was pretty extreme. It took a long time to warm up and then was incredibly sort of grippy and really pretty edgy. So I think it's only appropriate that this new M4 CSL comes as standard, not just on the Cup 2 rubber, but the Cup 2R rubber, like this. Pretty extreme, isn't it? Today, both cars are on Pilot Sport 4S rubber because, well, the weather is somewhat changeable. It also means we have a straight fight. It's so interesting getting back into the M4 CSL after the M3. In some ways, this car is on a hiding to nothing. There's no hiding from it. That S54 engine is just magical and brings the car alive in a way that this engine simply can't match. There's just no two ways about it. It makes the old car, in some ways, out of reach of this. More desirable than this can, can hope to be, which seems a bit unfair. So let's concentrate on the things that, well, this does better. What the old car can't match, much as I thought it was, you know, it still felt quick, this, the almost extra 200 brake horsepower and definitely over 200 pounds foot of torque more makes this feel monstrously rapid and obviously gives you a lot to play with oh, even through the really quick turns here. <laughs> is 3.7 to 62 so 1.2 seconds quicker and it feels every bit of that. Interestingly the CSL only has 39 brake horsepower more than a standard M4 competition and no more newton meters. Not that it needed it. It's a car you can certainly rely on the torque. I noticed in the Nürburgring lap time which your Bidinger did that he was certainly short shifting in places. Whereas with the S54, you definitely ring it out. Sometimes it's easier just to sort of like through here, just keep it in, say, third instead of second, or fourth instead of third. By the way, that Nürburgring lap time was a 7.15.677, some 13 seconds quicker than a previous gen GTS, and 35 seconds quicker than the E46 CSL. The brakes, I mean, just a different league in this. The gearbox as well, for all that you know, we might say, well, oh, it's an auto, it is so much smoother. Does this still feel lightweight when you get in here? In some ways, obviously less so because it's just a more modern car. We've got the screens here, which you need because this is obviously much more adjustable than the old car. In that, there was really just a case of, well, you had a sport button and you could turn the DSC off. And that was about it. In this, well, I've got the M2 button up here set up to configure all of this. Initially, I had everything just up to maximum, but actually I've reined it back down the engine and chassis uh, just to their middle sport setting. Sport's what they used, in fact, around the Nürburgring. This is quite a bumpy little track in places. You use quite a bit of kerb, so it's just felt better. It almost feels a bit too sort of like it's trying to fight itself if you have everything ramped all the way up. That might of course feel different if it was wearing the Cup 2Rs and it was a little warmer. And what about over the limit? Still got that front engine rear drive balance. It's still a huge amount of fun. It's just the fact that you can definitely feel the extra weight. You ramp it up and it still feels like it's fighting itself. You soften it off and well obviously the weight is sort of isn't as well controlled, the body's just occasionally getting a little out of sync perhaps with the suspension. It's not just a big lumbering 
blunt instrument this at all. It feels really finely honed. <laughs> it's clear from driving both these CSLs that they are a really interesting blend. There is definitely some track in their DNA, but equally they are not as purely pit lane as the half cage GTSs that sit between them. So it seems appropriate to have one final drive in the M4, well away from the red and white curbs. On the road I don't think this is actually any less comfortable than a standard M4 competition which was already a pretty sort of firm car but it always feels firm in terms of its structure rather than just having sort of overly hard suspension. I've got this in its sports setting on the suspension because I think that just brings well more complete body control to the car when you're on a road like this and you want to enjoy it. On the road this car definitely has a more focused character. Ironically I think because this has different cambers at the front to help it on track when it's fully loaded up it can feel almost just a little bit larger a little bit vaguer around the straight ahead initially and in everyday driving. So what to conclude about this third CSL? I'd argue that there's actually a greater sense of light weight of weight saving than those 100 kilos because everything else obviously feeds into the feel of this car so you get greater response you know on the throttle and to the steering and the way that it rides and it moves over the road so it feels lightweight i think it feels sufficiently special compared to a standard m4 to merit those three letters the c s and the l however is it the best csl no. That title still belongs to the glorious E46, or maybe the Batmobile, but that's an argument for another day. Perhaps surprisingly, I don't think this latest CSL has quite the dynamic magic of the recent M2 and M5 CSs either, but I think that's because it has traded a little bit of those cars' utter brilliance on the road in order to give more outright performance at the limit on track, on those Cup 2 R's. It has compromised in order to be a CSL, in order to be the birthday present that the M Division wanted. Happy birthday BMW M. Here's to another half century. Hopefully a few more CSLs. Mm -hmm.